Live from Las Vegas, Nevada, it's The Cube at IBM Edge 2014. Brought to you by IBM. Welcome back to Las Vegas, everybody. This is Dave Vellante with Jeff Frick. Andrea Nelson is here. She's the director of storage uh, for Intel. Andrea, welcome to theCUBE. Thank you, I'm glad to be here. So we're here at Edge. What's going on at Edge for you guys? Well, we have two very exciting product announcements in conjunction with IBM. Um, the first being their real-time compression appliance with the Intel 8926 uh, communications chipset. And we also have uh, new store-wise uh, product family being announced with the Intel E5 2600 V2 processors included. Great, so yeah. well, good, congratulations. So we were talking off camera about all this need for data reduction, so you're seeing it, and we'll talk about Flash some more as a big disruptor, but you, you certainly you know, saw it in the early days, some of the deduplication appliances, mm -hmm. obviously you use some of your products, but they're very CPU intensive Absolutely. Um, uh, uh, operations, a lot of math heavy stuff, whether it's deduplication or, or compression, uh, particularly with the case of IBM, it's in line, so there's got to can be no performance degradation. So talk about that a little bit, the progression of that technology you know, IBM specifically or throughout the industry? What are you guys seeing? Yeah, I mean, we are definitely seeing the need for more I.O., more networking, more cores, more cache capability to support, to support executing these functions um, in line. The latest version of our processors, the E5 uh, 2600 V2, added more compute cores, more cache, um, and so in, along with that, we have the Intel Storage Acceleration Libraries, which are foundational algorithms that our customers and developers can integrate into their platforms that optimize um, uh, functions such as hashing for dedupe or, or AES and I, any, any of the storage security features. So a lot of people might not know about sort of Intel's storage business. I mean, obviously you sell to the storage companies mm -hmm. when they need compute, they go to you. Mm -hmm. um, maybe talk about the business a little bit. Um, Talk yeah. about its charter, its you know formation, its you know history. Sure, sure. So the storage business at Intel um, has been around for quite a while, and basically this group has been working on influencing our standard server CPUs to include features and functionality that provide data security and the performance for storage workloads that that our our customers and partners need. Um, we, at the end of 2011, announced that we believed about 80% of, of new storage systems were shipping based on Intel architecture, um, converting over from risk. So you can see that that drive for greater compute uh, is really is really what was behind that foundation. Also, the desire to use standard x86 platforms and benefit from that ecosystem of providers, um, both from a hardware and a software perspective. That are so let's just talk about that 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 benefit a little bit because. You know, they say there's still 20% out there, 20% holdouts, which is probably a healthy thing, right? You don't want to have 100% no, on the market. No, no. Right? <laughs> Absolutely. Usually people start looking at you know, under the covers, you don't want to do that. But, but, so, but I've seen, I've observed other uh, organizations, um, whether it be IBM or guys like you know, EMC or HP or whomever, sort of converting mm -hmm. from, from risk. Um, and it's not trivial, necessarily. No, it's um, not. You got to put a big effort. We talked to Pat Gelsinger about this. He's mm -hmm. a you know, legend. He's been on the Cube many, many times. And, and, but then the result, once you uh, transition over, is the, the massive um, ecosystem right. uh, and software development capabilities that exist. A lot of people don't, may not know about those. I wonder if you could talk about those a little bit and what role Intel plays in terms of catalyzing that so, as the steward of the ecosystem. <laughs> so Intel plays two roles. One, we work with our, with our OEM customers who have proprietary software to optimize around IA. But even more importantly, we work broadly with the storage ecosystem. So BSD, major operating system, Linux. Also, we work with customers like Microsoft to help them optimize their, their software around IA. Um, especially in storage, you're seeing a lot of new startups, right, coming to coming into fruition who are who are utilizing BSD and Linux. And so, innate in those boxes, you'll see key storage features like um, 
you know, on our Xeon platforms, we have asynchronous dim refresh, right, which protects the, it's a hardware pin that connects and protects the system in case of a power failure. Those drivers are, are um, included in the Linux and, and BSD offerings, which makes it easier for, for our customers to bring their products to market. How about Flash? What are you guys seeing in, in Flash? Um, you guys play in the market, you yes. support the market. Yes, you know, we play in the market. We have an offering of um, both NVMe, right, the highest performance flash interface available, and uh, SATA SSDs in both two and a half inch form factor as well as PCIe adapter cards. Um, we have data center products that are optimized for the data center that provide consistency of, in performance, they provide data data protection through through the different write phases, um, and those products have been extremely popular. <laughs> and we see all of our customers announcing more and more um, our flash arrays uh, because of the value prop that they offer in terms of performance through reducing latency. What if you could talk about sort of what you're seeing, Andrea, Andrea in the data center, the trends that you're seeing, and and how does Intel respond? Do you sort of are you more tactical? Customers come to you and say, hey, I need this, I want this, I want that, and you deliver? Mm -hmm. um, how much of a you know, sort of horizon do you put on um, where you're doing you know, big time planning with the companies, you know, your, your partners, and you're, you're going to market with you know, broader strategies? How does it work? Yeah, I think so from our perspective, especially in the storage space, we're looking, we're looking out a lot further than, than we used to. We look at the, I think IDC is saying 44 zettabytes now, a recently released update in 2020 thinking, you know, what does the infrastructure in that time frame need to look like to manage and store, right, a subset of that 44 zettabytes of data that's going to be available. So we have been spending a lot of time looking at software-defined infrastructure generally, and then our team on software-defined storage and working with um, OpenStack, right, on optimizations. I think the biggest thing that we see is a need for OpenStack and Ceph for block storage. They don't have the enterprise capabilities to be picked up and, and adopted um, broadly today. So there's, there's a lot of effort and, and work that's going on. So what's your role in um, OpenStack? Are you sort of watching it? Are you guys directly contributing? Are you We're writing code? We are contributing, yes. Yeah, so we're going to be contributing um, an erasure code technology in oh, really? Swift. Yeah. For, for, so, so, so for the distributed object? Mm -hmm. Distributed object store, yes. All right, uh, so that's, um, what's, what, what, what role? I mean, you guys contributing the code, you're writing, helping write we're, the code? We're writing or? it, we're writing it and contributing it to the open source community. And then we'll also work with, um, with our customers to help them with their implementations and optimization. Outstanding, okay. Um, can, you, can you share with us kind of, now, so how's that work? Is that, are those folks in the storage division that are doing that, or mm -hmm. is that broader Intel, or? This is, well, it's, um, so Intel has our software solutions group, right, which maintains most of our, of our developers, but yes, they, they work with the open source community just like Intel's done. This isn't, this isn't a new game for Intel, right? I mean, Intel's right. been one of the top contributors to Linux for, for many, many years. Right. And so we're setting up and will be driving a similar effort to OpenStack, we're also contributing on OpenFlow um, and some of the other networking protocols as well. Now what do you make of all this software-defined meme that's going on? Everybody's going software-defined crazy and mm -hmm. software is eating the world and software-defined is eating storage and everything else. So. Well, I, I view it as absolutely necessary, right? You have to break the lock between hardware and software to truly unleash and um, enable the flexibility in a data center that's required. I mean, we look at, we have an example internally at Intel where we're working with our own IT group um, to set up a, a sync and share file application for employees, similar to like a Dropbox. Mm -hmm. And scoping that effort, we thought we'd need about two petabytes of storage. Well, Intel has about 20 petabytes in the ecosystem today, um, but we can't reclaim any of it, right, for this new application. So when you look at a software-defined um, future, providing that break and ability for an application to come in, take control of a pool of resources, utilize it, turn it back over so another application can come in and grab it, it's absolutely vital to, to supporting what we need in the future. Well, so 10% to, to create your own internal drop boxes of the, of the existing storage that you've built up over all these years? Is that, uh, is that what you said? Sorry? You said it would take two we're thinking about two petabytes over the lifetime of the application, right? And you so said you get about 20 now? We, not on that particular application, but in, within store, yeah, overall okay. in Intel. Okay, but not, not all of Intel? No. Okay, I was going to say. 
that would seem like an so awfully large percentage. Andrew, you're saying you see that uh, software defined as a positive, right? There's, there's mm -hmm. a flip side in there. So there's the uh, sort of the elephant in the room is a lot of people make a lot of money by not having things software defined, by having all this function sort of buried inside the box. That's true. Um, are you, you know, are you nervous about that? Are your partners nervous about that? You think it's a good thing because uh, if prices drop, people will buy more? What are your thoughts? I think I, I think that it's the latter, more mm -hmm. of what you said, but absolutely, I, I think some of our, our partners are nervous. But you know, if you go out and you talk to um, many of our major customers, they all have their software-defined story. So from an Intel perspective, um, our focus is really looking at what are the features and fun functionality that's needed in the underlying building blocks, and then how can we work with our partners to, to optimize their solution. When you think about um, things like hyperscale and massive scale out, mega data centers, you guys, you got your fingers in every pie, right? So, <laughs> so you, you have good visibility on what's going on in the industry and you were seeing that a lot of the trends in hyperscale bleed into the, the enterprise. Um, how real is that? How fast is that? What can we learn from what's going on in the, the big mega data centers? And, and how can IT practitioners in the data center uh, 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 borrow from that, learn from that, benefit from that. Yeah, I think, I mean, I think what's happening hyperscale from a public cloud service provider perspective is very real, right? I mean, they have, they have unique problems that they were trying to solve and they found that a lot of the existing storage infrastructure was optimized for something else, right? It's not wrong, it's just, you know, was, was built to fix a different problem. And so what they were able to do very successfully, I think, was take reliability to a, to a different level and, and utilize standard high volume servers and some of the open source software that's available to create very innovative storage solutions. Now, they were building something brand new. They didn't have the enterprise IT legacy applications that they had to deal with, right? They didn't, didn't have the baggage. Yeah, yeah, you know, they didn't have, so, so I think that some of those best known practices being developed in the in the hyperscale cloud space will migrate their way into the enterprise data center, but it's it's going to be a journey, not an immediate, immediate what, flip. What should we be watching for your business, for Intel storage business, um, near term, mid term, even long term? What are some of the objectives that you're setting for the business? What should observers be looking for as indicators of, of success? So I think um, from a storage perspective, we're still going after that remaining <laughs> holdout of CPU uh, market segment share, but we're really focusing in on um, software-defined infrastructure, software-defined storage, looking at the orchestration layer and the software-defined storage control controller and, uh, and making sure that those are optimized and ready for enterprise consumption. Great. All right, Andrea, well, thanks very much for coming on theCUBE. Appreciate right. your, your time, and keep it right there, everybody. Jeff Frick and I will be back with our next guest. We're live at IBM Edge. This is day one. Uh, this is theCUBE, and we'll be right back. <laughs>